So I think in terms of vehicle dynamics, uh, the fact that you have disruptive technologies coming into, uh, you know, into the powertrain. So you're moving away from IC engine into EVs. Uh, the whole distribution of the vehicle architecture is very different. So now you have uh, a distribution of the center of gravity of the vehicle across the height of the vehicle, the mass of the vehicle, and this uh, presents new challenges to the industry. Uh, and, and that is the one main difference, okay? Uh, the other important factor is that vehicle dynamics becomes a crucial attribute because the key differentiator in the car earlier was the engine. You know, the type of engine, the character of the engine. Now it is going to become the user experience when the vehicle is in motion. So that is determined by how the car behaves in terms of steering feel, in terms of the confidence while driving, in terms of the handling, the fun to drive aspect, as well as the comfort. Okay, so to aid this, we're looking at new technologies in the chassis. Yeah, like using semi-active systems, uh, redistributing the masses and inertia in the vehicle to kind of meet the kind of driving attributes that you would need. So there's a lot of interesting things happening in vehicle dynamics due to the whole EV uh, movement. So um, similar to my last uh, question, one big aspect is safety, which is in terms of the stability of the vehicle and the confidence while driving. And because you have an EV with a large mass that's on the rear of the vehicle, stability becomes a crucial factor. And uh, to aid in stability, uh, you do have uh, a new engineering challenge in terms of setting up the vehicle, the architecture of the vehicle. So the whole development process has become a little more complex in the sense that we are front-loading a lot of development virtually. And we're also adding a lot of uh, software in loop, a lot of hardware in loop, and a lot of driver in loop. So Idiada is specializing a lot with the driver in loop development where we're able to bring the driver who is ultimately the customer, right? So we bring the expert driver or the expert engineers earlier on into the process using driving simulators, actually driving simulation models to give feedback much before the prototypes appear. Yes, they definitely are because every platform that's, uh, that's coming out or being worked on in the industry, uh, there is a lot of sharing between these different powertrains. So you have CNG, you have diesel, you have petrol, you have EV. Uh, and in some cases, you might have hybrid as well. So then it becomes the whole chassis now needs to be able to accommodate all of this and be able to deliver a driving experience that the customer wants with a lot of similarity. So this presents a new challenge and hence there is a lot more um, considerations while designing the suspension and the architecture of the vehicle. There is a lot more work being done in simulation, a lot more correlation with test results both on the component and the vehicle level. A uh, lot more driving simulator use that we're pioneering here at Idiada uh, to bring the driver early on into the experience, reduce the number of prototypes, and also not multiply the engineering effort across the different platforms because you can't have uh, you know parallel development on each platform you know, because that presents very large work in product development. So rather to commonize, to optimize between these different powertrain variants, similar kind of uh, vehicle dynamics attributes. So uh, it is more of indirect, I would say, because, because of the fact that the weight drives up with the batteries, you know, being much heavier than a fuel cell, and the fact that the battery weight does not change uh, throughout the course of the development. I mean, throughout the course of the vehicle, you start a vehicle with a full charge, your mass stays the same. But if you were in a fuel cell vehicle, as the fuel decreases, the mass decreases. So to drive a uh, reduction in weights, there's a lot of emphasis on using new age materials, whether it be uh, you know, composites, whether it be migration to lighter materials like aluminum or magnesium for chassis components. Uh, we are seeing a trend where all of this is being injected into the process. The fact that you have a lot of software now because a lot of the systems are becoming active. So the steering is migrating to steering by wire, the brakes are becoming brake by wire. Uh, your suspension systems are becoming semi-active and active. So there's a lot of software, you know, in the controllers that are communicating with CANs to all these independent devices, taking a lot of information from the sensors. So software, software tuning is becoming a big part of uh, vehicle dynamics uh, development and influences the customer uh, uh, experience. Uh, so you will, uh, you have a lot of tuning that can be done in the softwares. Um, a lot of work on the algorithms for how these different systems will work 
uh, and ultimately deliver a car that is comfortable and safe. That's true. So, tyres, naturally, with the emphasis on range, there's a lot of development happening with low RRC tyres. So, they are just trying to, uh, you know, maximize your range. Hence, you're looking at low rolling distance on tyres. You're optimizing aerodynamics. You're working on every different area to improve the efficiency of the vehicle. So, tyres naturally become a, a crucial factor in, in the road loads that act on the vehicle. So, when you talk about... Uh, uh, tires, the big factor is rolling resistance and with the decrease in rolling resistance there are a lot of other factors in terms of comfort and stability that are also influenced so there's a lot of development in that area with new materials in tires being developed uh, and new technologies to cater to this need. You can see it happening everywhere, maybe a little slower in commercial vehicles but uh, because making a viable solution in terms of carrying a huge load of the battery uh, that is a penalty so what ends up happening is your uh, gross vehicle weight has to stay the same. So your load carrying capacity is decreasing when you add the batteries to the vehicle. So um, there is a lot of development going there to try to minimize the size of batteries and look at other alternative technologies as well. But nonetheless, I think at Idiada, 80% of the development projects we're doing here in India are all on electric vehicles. So that's a huge jump from like four years ago where 10% was on EVs. So you can see that the products that are going to come out in the future, whether they be commercial vehicle or passenger cars, are going to be um, a lot, uh, I mean, majority of them are going to be your levies, which is in match with the regulation that the government also uh, has in place. So, um, three-wheelers in India are a big market. We've seen a lot of uh, increase in the number of three-wheeler startups, uh, three-wheelers running in the market. They're now performing not just a passenger carrying application for last while mobility, but they're also doing load carrying, which means they're going into the commercial vehicle segment. And I'm happy to say that at Idiada, we have a very strong formalized process for development of vehicle dynamics on, on three wheelers. And we're working on some very interesting projects that have got, uh, you know, global funding and global interest uh, to develop some uh, world-class uh, three wheeler EV vehicles. Uh, so at Idiada, that is also an area that we work on and we've got very specific uh, software tools, very specific instrumentation, very specific skills and know-how to deliver ride and handling on these vehicles. So that's something we're working on. See, uh, all of these work together in unison because they're all different tools or all different competencies to ultimately deliver a good vehicle. So I think that at Idiada over the last 10 years, uh, simulation has not reduced the amount of testing. Uh, neither has testing reduced the amount of simulation, nor has it reduced the time spent on design. But I think all complement each other at the right phase during the development process to deliver a good vehicle. Uh, and of course, at Idiada, we're able to move upstream and downstream very efficiently with a lot of new technologies coming from our software tools, coming on hardware tools like the driving simulator, coming from a lot of know-how. Uh, so I think uh, we can say that s some iterative processes in, in testing have been reduced because of simulation and driver in the loop and hardware in the loop. So we're able to spend more time on refinement of of the prototype, especially from the prototype development phase, a lot of time to refine the prototype to meet target. Okay. So we're doing a lot of things first time right, and hence a lot more in refinement from the testing and development point of view.